Hey, what's up, garden friends? Today's vlog is going to be a little bit different because new computer, who dis? So the vlog I had planned for today was actually just going to be way too complicated for me to edit because I have to learn a whole new software. So I thought I'd go outside. We're going to look around the garden, kind of a garden tour, but not necessarily because everything's dead and dormant. But going around, looking at some things, because it's still a garden tour because I'm going around and showing you stuff. You know what I'm saying. So next weekend, I will hopefully have homed into my new editing skill. Hopefully by next weekend, that vlog will be the one that should be coming out this weekend and then parts of whatever's going on next week and uh, things will be back to normal. But I just, there's a learning curve. So I got to figure out, hello from my reflection. Hope y'all are doing well. That's enough talking. Just gonna, let's go ahead and just jump on into the talking about the garden stuff. Why am I still talking? Sorry. Hey, Toby. How's it going, bud? Yeah, you good boy, Toby. Oh, it is a gorgeous day. It's like 57 and sunny. I feel sun on my skin, which is nice. Something I haven't experienced in quite some time. Though it was really nice a few weeks ago, but um, I was downtown at the Orchid Show, so I was inside for the nice weather most of the time. Not complaining, it was a blast, but I haven't really been out in the garden since, like, November. And typically, in the wintertime, I can get out here and do all kinds of things, you know, occasionally. Not all the time, but occasionally. This year, it has been so horribly cold and so incredibly windy that I just, it, I haven't been out here because the terrible and not fun like all of these pots right here these i had like i was starting to get them cleaned up and i was ready to move them i was going to go put them away and they froze to the ground for like two and a half months so they're actually still kind of frozen like you can see this guy right here still got a little bit of ice in it not a big deal but they're not stuck to the ground anymore so that's good Ugh, but just ugh, what a terrible sight i hate winter it's so gross everything's just so dead i usually have my bananas over here and annuals tucked in all over the place and tropicals mixed in and whatnot there are some things i'm gonna have to deal with this year though like uh this guy he's not doing great we had a ton of snow back in november and that weighted it down usually they'll pop back up but this guy he's not come back up so I may have to anchor it back up, or I don't know, I actually may even just get rid of it or move it elsewhere because these are supposed to have a very nice, okay, sirens. I'm gonna wait for that to pass. Okay, as I was saying, so on each side of the fence, I have these, these are blue arrow junipers. See, I even, I still have the tag there. They're supposed to be tall and have a columnar type shape to them, but yeah, not so much. They need full sun for that. And uh, they're just, they're not getting full sun anymore. The maple trees have grown up so much that they shade it, and then the oak tree's grown a lot, and that shades it, and then the sun just kind of goes down this way throughout the rest of the day. But I think it's safe to say I'm probably never going to get this look out of them. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm also slightly allergic to juniper, so I really would prefer them not leaning over, over the fence like that, over, like, the entry where you come in. So, yeah, it would be a shame to get rid of them, though, because they were very expensive. They were not cheap plants, so... I may see if there's something else I can do with them somewhere else before I dig them up. I'm also going to come in here and remove this azalea, or at the very least give it an extreme pruning, which it will respond well to. I think it's going to look much better with a really, really heavy pruning, because it's just, it's gotten really long and leggy, and it gets afternoon sun, which isn't the most ideal for an azalea. Morning sun would be much better. It's just, it... It was nice when it was first planted here, like a decade ago, but now it's just kind of looking sad and scraggly. And it comes over, like, right where the front of the garden is. Things have a curve here. And there's this really pretty lava stone that's planted underneath here. It has a nice moss growing on it. I think that I could do something a lot nicer here to kind of make, like, a little maybe tropical looking area, put some types of aeroids and things in the spot and not have a great big huge shrub here. Uh, also, I the sun's strong. I can't see my viewfinder, but I'm trying my best to make sure that we're in focus here. The Ponceris trifoliate. This is the flying dragon. It's the Japanese bitter orange. Looking really cool. I love the winter interest on this plant. The branches are all curly and gnarly, and they have very, very long spines on them. It's not a fun plant to work with, that's for sure. But it looks so 
cool. It looks amazing during the summertime when it has leaves and flowers on it, and then in the late summer and fall, starts to put out fruit and has little, little oranges, tiny little oranges. They don't taste good, but they're pretty. And then in winter, you get this awesome interest, and it is a semi-deciduous when we have more mild winters that aren't super, super windy. Sometimes it'll hold on to some of its foliage like you can kind of see in here. This year, very windy. We had lows around, uh, I think it got down to negative eight one night, so that this was not its year. And I'm hoping this year that the spring will be fairly mild. Last spring, I, I was amazed that I got fruit out of this last year because it got really warm in March and then April was horribly cold. There was just frost everywhere, it killed off lots of spring flowers, did a lot of damage to trees. But this guy held on. I think that's because they bud a little bit later. And so when that cold damage happened, the buds were still really small. So hopefully that'll be the same this year, because every year it just puts on even more of a show. So as long as the wind doesn't blow the flowers away, and um, cold doesn't get it, it's a lot of fun. Speaking of cold temperatures, like it was just a minute ago, we'll do a queen palm update. Yeah, she's dead. It's what it is. Got down to negative eight, like I said. Even if I had protected it, I don't think there's anything I could have done with cold temperatures like that. So, just is what it is. I'm actually, I'm not sad about it anymore, because I had it for a very long time, it was a great tree, but... What's done is done. It's in the past. I like to look forward, so I'm not gonna let myself get bummed out about it. And look at this area I have now to landscape. That's fun. Oh, and the castor beans. I need to cut them down too. <laughs> They're still there. The cold came out of nowhere this year. Typically, I do a lot of the spring cleanup in November, but this year it was just frigid in November, and I had to focus on getting the plants moved into the garage like immediately. I didn't have time to worry about things out here so much. So. The annuals just kind of had to deal with things, and yeah, they are gigantic though. For some reason, they look bigger without the leaves on. Isn't that kind of odd? And see, I have this pot over here covering a Chinese fan palm. It's also incredibly heavily mulched, but sometimes I like to just go ahead and toss old broken pots on top of things to help keep the wind off the area. The sun can kind of make like a little oven in there to warm that area up a little bit faster if it does get really frigid. That's what that's about. Won't know until the temperatures get pretty warm, like probably not late May to early June, whether or not the Chinese fan palms will come back up. As I was saying though, I have this big area here to re-landscape. I was thinking maybe a dwarf magnolia of some sort, preferably an evergreen, or going with another hardy palm. Well, this, you, I don't think that's, you can see any of that. Sorry, guys. So yeah, maybe a um, pindu palm. The pindus, they, they grow a lot more slowly. They're more cold tolerant. And because of the slower growth, it'll be easier to protect it during the winter time. And I really like the effect, the texture of those palms. They have really big, thick trunks, gorgeous arching leaves. I prefer the varieties that have more of a blue tint to the leaves. There's also the butia odorata. I don't, I'm not going to go into that. But that is an option for the spot. Maybe a mule palm. I don't know. That's like a heavy investment risk to make because mule palms are incredibly expensive. The mule palm is a cross between a queen palm and a pindu palm. And they have an extreme tropical appearance to them. I have a couple of them. I did a whole video on them. But I'm not going to be sticking those in the ground because the size they're at now, is, they would cost a fortune to replace them. So I'd want to start small. And yeah, I'm thinking pindu palm might be the way to go. I don't want to go with the Mediterranean fan palm because... Uh, they're, they damage a lot more easily with moisture, even though it would still be protected. Moisture still gets in there, can get in the crown. And um, I have sprinklers set up and whatnot. You don't want water getting into their crowns. And those grow incredibly slowly. And windmill palms are an option, but I just, I have some windmill palms. They're not my favorite for a tropical vibe, even though I do really like them. That would be probably the best option that are a sable, but the sables, that's a whole other thing. Because the sable palms, I talked about in another video, they don't ship well. So to get one that has a trunk on it up here would be very difficult. And they take a few years to recover from being cut back. And they have to cut them back like that. Because with sable palms, once you trim their roots, once they're dug up, the entire root dies. So if you break part of the root, the rest of the root goes. That's why they're sold in sticks. And you can get them potted. Costs a little bit more. But you still have the issues with shipping and the damage to the heart and the palm, that, of, the palm of the trunk. They have a very soft trunk and... Um, they have a very delicate heart, I should say. That's the part in the middle of the trunk, and it, it damages easily. I don't know how else to describe it. So the rattling and vibrations and things from the trucks. Uh, so they, it would, I'd, I just don't think it would do well. Eh, needle palm's looking pretty good. This one hasn't been protected very much at all. It's a smaller one, smaller than my others, but it's holding up better. When it did drop down into the negatives, I threw this pot over the top of it just to shelter it a little bit. It's more protection from the wind than anything else. Okay, let's check on the cactus over here. These guys, 
Yeah, I was worried that might happen. I protected them, but they're still in containers, so they're more exposed. And the cloth is more to keep the moisture off of them than anything else. But the Apuntia fell over, which it really shouldn't have, because that's one of the things that they told me about when they sold it to me, was that it was tough and it stands up, but it's also in a pot. The Choya, I know it doesn't look good, but I think it'll be okay. That's just like a cheap cutting from some annuals that were in there. I didn't bother bringing it in because I have a ton of them already. And uh, what else? Of course, the sedum's looking nice. Another hardy cactus down there looking good. It has that deformed growth on it, but I think it'll be all right. And uh, the euphorbia doesn't actually look half bad considering how cold it got. I thought it might look a lot worse than that considering it's in a container. That's the Ascot Rainbow. There is zone six, and I'm in zone six, but we had some kind of zone five temperatures around here, and they're in a pot, so that's they're more exposed. I'm surprised. Looks okay. And here are the other windmill palms. I took some frozen pots and used them to help weigh down the frost cloth that was over this one, but it didn't help. It's so windy, just blew it right off, so that's not good. But this one over here, that held up okay. In fact, it's actually probably kind of toasty in there. You can see... Uh, the damage to the crown of the main plant, which isn't great at all. This happened last year, too. So I think um, it's actually nice enough, as long as it's over 50. I'm going to go ahead and spray some copper-based fungicide down in there just to be preventative because that browning, the freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing creates bacteria, fungal growth, and things like that start to happen, and that's when the crown pops out, when you start to lose your spears. And that's, that's not a fun thing to deal with. But I did give them a very gentle pull and they stayed put so that's a that's a really good sign but right here these plants are what i'm most surprised by this winter these are if you've been around for a while i got these camellias a couple years ago actually at the home depot and they were sold as cold hardy camellias but they didn't really have labels on them and um this one it does have a label it says high fragrance ivory pink with deeper pink so i thought they were just saying for two years i thought they're just saying that it smelled nice and i was like well that's a useless label i need to be able to look up the plant and then i realized that that was the name of the variety and i googled it and it was saying zone eight seven b and eight and up so not even a cold hardy variety but um so i was kind of upset about that i was like well if they're not cold hardy then i don't even care about them because i can get any variety of non-cold hardy camellia there are many varieties, tons that are really, really pretty. So why bother with these two that are just like kind of pretty? So it's like, I'll just leave them out. I'm not going to take up space in my grow room with them. To my shock, they're alive and they're potted. Potted plants, they're nowhere near as hardy during the winter time. I haven't watered them or anything. So just, like I said, I had made peace with it. I was going to just be like, bye, I'm done with you. But I'm not now. Look at them. They, they look fine. I guess I should say they look fine considering that they've been potted, exposed to the winds, and haven't been watered, and it got down to negative 8 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'd say that they've earned a place in the garden this year. I'm going to have to go ahead and put them in the ground, plant them up. They deserve it. They earned it. Poor things. I feel a little bit bad for them, but they're okay. Let's see, and under the table, I have some Sempervivums. Yeah, they look all right. Not too bad. Considering how cold it got and they're still in their pan, the oil's actually kind of moist. Don't really understand that because they've been protected here, but I'm okay with it. Hey, it's less stuff I got to get this spring, so I know I want to plant some more and do some more things with these. Then over here is where the Hedichium, I believe it's Flaming Torch, is planted. I am really anxious to see if that made it through the winter. It made it through really cold temperatures last year too, but winter was normal last year. This year winter started in November, when normally it's like November, December are cold, but not freezing. So we will see. It's going to be a little bit tricky because I'm also going to have to remove this Alberta spruce this year because it's done. It's very old. You can see the top of it's died off there, which means there's no more growth coming out of it. I'm not a huge fan of the Alberta spruces anyways. I think they look nice when they're used properly, but this one, it's just old. It's got bare spots in it. It's got to go. So this whole area is getting completely redone this year too. That magnolia is not planted in there. It's just piled. I have mulch piled around it to help protect it through the cold because it's a Bracken's Brown Beauty, which are pretty cold hardy, but potted. And it's a little bit risky when temperatures are extreme and, you know, the negatives. But there's definitely not enough room to plant that there. So that's just where it's resting for now. And I'm not too worried about the bananas. They're tough. And I actually already have some on order, a different variety that I'm going to try this year. So and if they don't come back, I have a new variety to stick in there. I'm going to try the Sabas. I've had them before. They're amazing. They get gigantic. They grow really fast. But they're nowhere near as cold hardy as the Bajus. But I had them for about four years, and they came back for me every year. But they were heavily mulched, and they were near a waterfall alongside of a pond. 
which creates a warm microclimate. But I think that I can probably kind of mimic something like that with the right amount of compost and mulch and whatnot. I think it's doable. Uh, okay, that was fun. Hope y'all enjoyed my mess, my very messy dead garden tour. I can't wait for spring. Just like probably about six weeks and really be getting going, doing some things out here. This place is gonna look completely different this time in like three months from now whole different backyard. Oh, and I'd be interested in playing around some suggestions for what to put into this berm here. Let me know your thoughts. I was just kind of brainstorming through here, so like I said, let me know. Comment down below or hit me up on Instagram at Tropical Plant Party. Follow me and I'll follow you back. I love some of these plant pictures, what's going on in people's gardens, just having fun, nerdy plant time with y'all. I just don't want to go with anything that's too high maintenance. I don't necessarily want to have to be building like entire greenhouses around something every single winter. That's not going to work for me. I don't have time when I got to move all the tropicals and tropicals? Tropicals. Yeah, I don't want to mess with all that. Maybe, you know, if it's something where I just have to burlap it, put frost cloth and some lights around it, maybe. But like I said, I'm not going to go too extreme. And maybe something that doesn't even need protection. Like I said, some type of dwarf magnolia, an evergreen one. I think that this space is probably not big enough for the Bracken's Brown Beauty, not long term. And, uh, well, hmm. The little gem's an option, but they're really only marginally hardy here. So, you know what I'm saying, though. They're anything. Any possibility. Let me know. And don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It helps a lot. It helps the channel a ton, and I really do appreciate it. So thank you for doing that. And subscribe as well, because I upload multiple times a week. So don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. All right. I've got cleaning to do. I'm going to come out here, cut out all the dune grass, and get what's left of the bananas that's sticking up there. All right. I hope everybody's doing well. Keep on growing. Bye-bye.